Joining us now for more in a first on CNBC interview is Whirlpool Chairman and CEO Mark Bitzer. Mark, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. The guidance lift on earnings looks especially substantial here. You lifted revenue as well. Talk about what, what's working for you right now. You know, I mean, of course, we all know what we're comping against, which was last year Q2 of the, the COVID quarter. But I would argue our results were impressive by any definition. You know, we had 32% revenue growth, growth also against 2019. Um, we had 11.4% EBIT margin, which basically show you that we, we can operate pretty well, even in what I call an upside down environment. Now, furthermore, and to your earlier point is we raise guidance again, um, which I think shows we're confident about consumer demand. Um, we're not naive in terms of some of the challenges would go away quickly, but we know what we can deal with and we put the actions in place to take control of what we can control. And that gives us the confidence we will have a very, very strong year. Talk to us about pricing. How, how much more are consumers paying for their appliances and and it looks like you have some pretty good pricing ability here to pass that on. I think your EBIT margin expanded, even though you are seeing cost inflation. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it first starts with why do we have to raise prices? The costs were kind of were increasing, and we saw a fairly significant wave of inflationary pressure coming at us. Um, and we talked already about that in the prior earnings call. So we knew the raw materials are coming. We announced and I would say successfully executed um, fairly significant and wide ranging price increases anywhere in the world between five and 12 percent. And we do see already in Q2 um, and even more so in Q3 and Q4, we see the benefits of these price increases, which we again executed in a very disciplined manner. And um, so we're in a pretty good shape from my perspective. Y Europe looked particularly strong. Yeah, I mean, obviously Europe, and again, we, we got to always keep in mind what the baseline effects were. Europe was last year more impacted by the COVID shutdowns and the store closures than the U.S. was, where the home improvement channel was still open. So in a year-over-year -year comparison, um, Europe looks very strong. Having said that, in absolute terms, we're very pleased with where we have been doing and in, in, in going in Europe on a sequential basis. Um, we're on the right trajectory. The revenue growth is strong. So we feel pretty good about the momentum which we have, not only in Europe and North America, but throughout the world. For the U.S. in particular, Mark, how much does this say about the strength of the housing market and this boom we have seen coming out of COVID? And, and how long do you expect that to last? The short answer is we're very bullish on the housing market. Now, we all read the headlines around the housing market starts cooling down. And I sometimes scratch my head. I think what we see right now is just um, <laughs> the housing market is not overheating and starts to correct itself to what I would call a healthy, sustained, long-time growth. Um, and that's a good thing. And, and that's ultimately driven by consumer demand is strong. And we shouldn't forget and lose sight of the housing market has been undersupplied for decades. Um, we've been consistently arguing that it will take several years of 2 million plus housing starts to correct and rebalance from a market perspective. And now we're just buried at 1.6. So in a long-term perspective, um, you just can't come around saying the housing market will remain strong. And right now what we see, the little pluses and downs, uh, ups and downs, they're more driven by the housing inventory or the lack of it, which explains a lot of the issues which you saw. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.